Hello, my name is Dave Simnick, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Soapbox. I first want to say that it's a humbling honor to be here. And today, I want to talk about why great leaders need authenticity. Specifically, why some movements fail and those with soul succeed. A little bit about Soapbox to understand why I'm standing here. I think about authenticity every day. And I actually get paid to think about authenticity. And the reason why I think about this topic so much is because we founded a company based on authenticity. See, Soapbox is a buy one, give one company. And what that means is that every time someone buys one of our bars of soap or liquid hand soaps or body washes, we donate a bar of soap to local homeless shelters or food pantries all across the United States. And we also work abroad in over 50 different countries through various different NGOs where we have local makers actually make the soap to not damage the local economies that we seek to serve. Every time someone buys one of our shampoos or conditioners or lotions, we do a month of clean water development through our amazing charity partner, Splash. So authenticity means everything to us because without it, we couldn't speak to our consumers in that authentic way. So I think about these type of things often. And in order to dive into what I want to talk about today, we need to establish a framework. There are three different case studies that I think about often when trying to think of why leaders need authenticity. And the first one is about Tom's shoes. Blake Mikowski started Tom Shoes back in 2006, and it's a similar one-for-one -one company. But what amazes me is how in such a competitive environment they were able to have such astronomical success. A counter example of this is it fascinates me why discount airlines like Spirit Air or Ryanair in Europe are some of the most hated brands by far. Yet, they're some of the most traveled and profitable airline companies in the whole industry. And finally, through this framework, I want to dive into how Nelson Mandela, after working with the African National Congress, as well as the sitting president at the time, was able to abolish apartheid and keep the country from tearing itself apart. So, in order to do that, I want to use a former TED Talk so behind me is a gentleman named Simon Sinek. That's Simon. And during his talk in 2009, he went over the golden circle. And that's his circle. The golden circle, to paraphrase, for those who haven't seen it or those who need a refresher, is boiled down to this. Consumers don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. I'll say it again. They don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And to go over his talk briefly, I want to dissect each of the lovers, levels. So starting with what, every company knows what he argues, what they make, what services they provide. This is full stop, businesses at least know what they provide. Few companies understand the how, and by how he means, well, how are they different? What's their unique selling proposition? What makes them different from their competitors? But very little, almost none, he argues, understand the why. And by why he means, well, companies' why should be to make profit. That's not what he's talking about. It's why get out of bed in the morning? Why, if we were to use an example of widget makers, should company X exist and company Y exist? Why does that company have a purpose and why should it be there? And as I thought about all these things, especially when it comes to authenticity, it was an amazing framework and it's one of the reasons we started Soapbox. Something as simple as a bar of soap, as simple as a bar of soap, one of the most commoditized products in the history of marketing. We chose the name Soapbox because it used to be door-to-door -door salesmen that sold soap. It was actually one of the first massively commercialized products. And then soap operas actually come from soap companies used to advertise on radio programs, daytime drama, to the head of the household that they were hoping would buy their wares, soap operas. 
we thought that we could start a company that had a really genuine why and actually change the emotional relationship with something as simple as a bar of soap. So Simon's talk had a profound impact on me. But as I continue to grow Soapbox and as the years have passed, I've noticed that why is not enough. It's not. And this isn't a critique, it's more of an amendment. I want to walk through a very stark example of this, and that is a couple years ago, a KFC franchise owner in Utah had a family member that had type 1 diabetes, and they wanted to do something about it. So they basically looked at their menu, found one of the most high profit margin items on there, and said, you know what, every time someone buys this item, we're going to donate a dollar to the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. It was an absolute failure. And the reason being is the item that they used to raise money for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation was a half gallon, 800 calories, 56 spoonfuls of sugar drink. Obviously, there's some irony here. Help save type 1 diabetes by potentially giving yourself type 2 diabetes. <laughs> it didn't resonate. It didn't work. And although the why was there, the why made sense, why are they selling this item? Because, gosh darn it, people with type 1 diabetes should not be born into that life. That makes sense, that why resonates, but the problem here is that it wasn't authentic. I want to walk through another example. Lamborghini, one of the nicest cars ever made. It's a status symbol. What if Lamborghini today said, we make such an amazing car, we make such a quality product that starting today, every time you buy one, we're going to donate one to a child. <laughs> that wouldn't stick. It wouldn't make sense. At, probably at best, it would hurt the brand. And the reason being is because it doesn't make sense. We know somewhere in a gut feeling when brands are lying to us or they're trying to be fake or inauthentic. So I want to add an amendment to the golden circle. That was a delayed click. Yes, it's true that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. But they only buy it and they only believe in that why if it is actually authentic. So. In the years of running Soapbox and the years of seeing the marketplace of different companies or leaders come out and put out their plans and put out their proposals and talk about the real purpose of why they believe in what they believe, I've noticed that without an arrow guiding them, it doesn't connect. So I want to go through Simon Sinek's golden circle by offering an arrow that leads to the bullseye of why. And that is, we start with quality. This is the base of the arrow. Every company out there believes that they make quality products. We make it with the finest ingredients. We make it with quality craftsmanship. We have the most skilled laborers assembling this beautiful product for you. Most everyone says that. Few companies actually are transparent about that. What makes them different? And in the age of Yelp reviews and Amazon reviews and Glassdoor reviews on how employees treat or employers treat their employees, this is becoming increasingly important. Radically transparent companies are winning this battle. And finally, the tip of that arrow is authenticity. And you can't have why without authenticity. And the reason being is because authenticity is legitimacy and legitimacy leads to why. Because without actually having authenticity, the arrow is pointless. Uh -huh, see what I did there? <laughs> ah, the magic of clickers. <laughs> this comes down to using the golden circle and using an arrow. This kind of looks like a target. And the reason why we use an arrow is because the only way you get to the bullseye of why is through the authentic arrow. So. To quote a much wiser man than myself, as Shakespeare once said, to thine own self be true, same to brands. Be truthful to your brand. And I wanna walk through a couple case studies. Tom Shoes, started by Blake Mikowski back in 2006. He was a successful entrepreneur. He goes down to Argentina. In a cafe, a woman stops by collecting shoes, and he goes, why are you collecting shoes? She goes, well, there are children who can't afford shoes and they can't go to school without shoes. And bing, 
light bulb goes off and he goes, wait, I should start a non-for-profit getting shoes from America to Argentina. This is a great idea. Although he's a successful entrepreneur and goes, wait, there might be a more sustainable way of doing this and starts Tom's Shoes. Tom Shoes has had astronomical success in a wildly competitive environment. And the reason being is because they follow the authentic arrow better than anyone else. Quality. They were one of the first people to actually introduce this type of Argentine, this Alfaragata shoe to the marketplace. Transparency. They used to bring people, or they still do, their customers along giving trips so that they could see it face to face, so that they could be a part of that how. And finally, the authenticity is both the tip, but then also the result of building up through this arrow and getting to why, and that is that every year they do one day without shoes. They get thousands of college students across the country in order to take off their shoes and walk around campus without shoes. Nike, Adidas, New Balance, they're not able to do that. And the reason being is because they didn't start with that mission. It's not authentic to their brand. But that's pretty amazing when people are willing to put themselves through discomfort for a whole day in order to live a brand's authenticity. So, it's not just an offense strategy in business, it's a defensive strategy. Skechers, looking at Tom's success in 2010, launches Bob's. I'm not kidding, this is literally what they did. I want to be in that board meeting where they're just like, if we can't do Tom's and we can't do Tim's, Bob, what do you got? Bob's, oh! Like, I, I think literally that's exactly how the meeting went. But I think about this and I'm just like, this, how? And even though Skechers continues to make Bob's, this one line is nowhere near successful as Tom's shoes. Let's take it a step further. Airwalk actually released their Airwalk Hope shoes. And once again, nowhere near the success of Tom's. Having authenticity with your brand is almost creating a moat that the bigger strategics can't cross because it is your brand. You are speaking from a place of why, and the reason why consumers believe in that why is because you have the authenticity and legitimacy to say it. But with every business, Tom's ran into trouble. In 2012 and 2013, there were growing amounts of criticism saying that mm, maybe their one-for-one -one model actually was hurting certain communities and helping. Because what if they were actually overloading certain economies with free goods instead of actually having local shoemakers make those shoes? More importantly, what if they were actually teaching dependents within the communities in which they, they were serving? This, these are great criticisms. And the way that Tom's responded to that is basically by saying, look, we understand that our transparency is being threatened. And without going from quality to transparency to authenticity, if you lose one part of the arrow, you can't get to authenticity. So they were in trouble, and Blake and his team thankfully responded to that. In 2013, 2014, and 2015, their biggest metric, as stated by Blake himself, was I want to see how many shoes are actually made in the countries we serve. And they switched it over to making where they give. Why is authenticity important? Well, in this growing age of where millennials are looking at what their friends are talking about with your brand and with other competitors' brands, and even Harvard Business Studies said that out of Yelp's five stars, if you move just one star over, a business can expect a five to 9% increase in sales. Just one star. And with over 41% of product searches starting on Amazon first, brands can't not afford to be authentic because we're sharing it anyways. And a lot of friends say that I look like a hipster. And some of my friends actually look like this, which I think takes it a step further than what I look like. But hipsters and millennials are kind of interesting breed. Being one myself, what I've noticed is that we're yearning for authenticity from our brands. The reason we want free-range chicken and organic this and organic that, and some of us even look like we're churning butter in our backyards, <laughs> and some of us are, <laughs> is because we want something that's real. We've been over-marketed to, and we don't believe fake social causes anymore. It needs to be from here. So I want to use a counterexample. When people fly Spirit and Ryanair in Europe, they hate it. 
Like literally, look at any type of review on these airlines and you're going to see beep, 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 and beep, 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 like it's Morse code. And when we look at this, it's, we go, well, how could these brands be authentic? It's because they're nothing that they're not and they're everything that they are. They even advertise that you are going to have a bad experience. Fly us, it will be the cheapest option and you will hate it. That is what they say. And it's so interesting because if you look at the authentic arrow, once again, the quality is not the quality of service, the quality is the price. People know exactly what they're getting, or hopefully, right? Like someone's not on kayak and like, this looks nice. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, my life. <laughs> like, yes, that has happened to me. But anyways, the point is that the transparency comes into how they advertise. The quality is the price. And finally, the authenticity is Michael O'Leary, the CEO of Ryanair, um, a couple years ago, jokingly told in the press conference that they were going to start charging people to use the toilet on the plane. Within hours, everyone started reporting that Ryanair was going to start charging people to use the toilet. And that, that is true authenticity. When you, as a joke, be like, hey, you can't go to the bathroom. You can't poo on a plane. You got to pay me. And then all of a sudden, everyone goes, yep, they're going to do it. That means you hit the brand. The brand is the fact that people believe you're not going to allow them to go to the bathroom without giving them a couple dollars, which would leave some really interesting plain fiascos without change. Ben Baldaza, basically the former CEO of Spirit, once said, no one walks into McDonald's and gets disappointed when they don't see flame and on the menu. It's the same thing with them. They are who they are, and they don't try to be what they're not. Finally, a personal hero of mine. It's not like I knew him. It's not like he was like on my fave five. I was like, hey, Nelson. I wish. Is Nelson Mandela. And to take this out of the corporate world and to extrapolate over to why all leaders need to be authentic, I find this example to be really interesting. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison. He was the greatest single threat to the white Afrikaner government or the National Party. And he was put in prison because he had such a powerful message. Now what's really interesting is that in the years that he spent in prison, he basically, when he was released, said, when I walked out of prison, that was my mission, to liberate both the oppressed and the oppressor both. The authenticity that he was able to have allowed for union to actually come together. Because one of the most important things that Nelson Mandela did is when he got out of prison, he didn't go to actually take away everything that the Afrikaners had. Yes, he wanted to dismantle apartheid, but one of the things that he fought against his whole party, the African National Congress, or, uh, was the fact that they wanted to dismantle pretty much everything, including the sports leagues. And Nelson Mandela knew how important these sports leagues were for the Afrikaners or the, 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 the ancestral German or Dutch individuals that actually forced apartheid on the majority of blacks within South Africa. He knew how important it was. And even though he was getting pressure from all the people within his party that said, why are you allowing these people to have their sports and their organizations as long as they weren't continuing to, to push forward apartheid, but why were you allowing these things to exist? And the reason being is because he knew that in order to get people to come together, to not have it tip, tear, tear, it, something, tear itself apart, was that there were some institutions that had to remain. When you look at the authenticity that he had, the quality was that he could speak more than anyone else about the time that he spent in prison. He could look at other members in the ANC and say, look, what time have you put in? Have you borne a larger cross than I have? And the transparency was in how he talked to other people and what he said. He was able to communicate through both speech and written letter to the Afrikaners that, yes, I am one day going to be president. I know that's wildly presumptuous for me to believe that he thought that, but yes, we are going to win probably this election in 1995 or 1994, 1995, but we can come together. And finally, the authenticity is he, more than any leader, had that authenticity to say, you know, 
I understand the rage and the desire from the ANC party members as well as the people who were put down under apartheid to rip apart the institutions, but there are some that need to stay because we need a united South Africa. It is true that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. But they only believe in the why if you have the authenticity behind it. I'm a firm, firm believer in the fact that all businesses can be better and all businesses can do good, but that good must be authentic because without authenticity, we're left wondering why. Thank you. <laughs>